first of all, thank you for your time. Thanking uh, everyone for his valuable time in order to join our uh, uh, webinars today, in order to discuss many uh, technological aspects and all the partners involved in order in the technology era. So let me start by uh, presenting the agenda uh, based on the sequential that we will start our presentation. We're gonna start with Madame Andrea, the uh, Senior Vice President, MasterCard Foundry. Then we will go uh, through uh, Fred Khoury, myself as a transaction banking manager that handling all the commercial technological side of Bank of Beirut through technology services. Then we will go through with Vexco, presented by Mr. Gavin, Senior Global Business Development Manager, and uh, our uh, uh, IT syndicate president, Mr. George Khwairi, who will also present uh, the technology services that the syndicate is adopting and the contribution across the local and the uh, global region that the syndicate is contributing. So, uh, uh, Madame Andrea, uh, you have uh, uh, your time now, please. Uh, let us see uh, what MasterCard has in place in terms of technology and services. Good afternoon and good morning, everybody, wherever you are in what location. Thank you very much for having me today. I believe I have about 20 minutes to talk to you. And I really would like to talk to you about the next generation of payments. And uh, if you uh, indulge me, I will try to maybe do it 15 minutes. If you want to then, you know, have any questions and put it in the chat or in the Q&A, and I'm happy to answer it. My name is Andrea Brajakova. Uh, I lead MasterCard Foundry for EEMIA. Foundry is a discipline within MasterCard which looks like after innovation, uh, customer experience, user experience, UI UX design, research, and obviously all the innovative solutions which we bring to the market. So today, I would like to take you on a journey, on a journey a little bit into a future, into um, four areas of payments and how we look at payments. And I would love for you, obviously, in the in the chat to comment. Uh, do you agree? Do you? Uh, what are your thoughts about the different disciplines which I will be talking about? So the chapter number one uh, uh, is about open banking uh, and really the emergence on open banking. I think, I think it's, it's a really quite significant topic. And later in my presentation, I will connect it as well to some of the technologies in blockchain. But I am personally, as a consumer as well, really excited about open banking. So if you think about it from an old way perspective, when we think about payments, right, we would think about the card and, and maybe POS device. Now, what has open banking brought to us? It's really today we underwent a massive digital and communication revolution from a from a, a world perspective. And obviously, COVID uh, contributed to it uh, uh, massively. And if you look at it from open banking perspective, and I want to take you on a journey. You remember I said I will take you on a journey. I want to take you to a UK. UK today uh, have a regulations that banks are instructed to open their data for third parties. This is really, really great because in the in if you think about it from an old way perspective, bank would somehow think that they own the customer. In this case, the customers own their own data and customers will decide with open banking, who do they give a consent to, to uh, be, uh, for the data to be shared and for the data to be visible. You might ask yourself, how does it actually work? So I want you to visualize it um, in a very simple manner. So today, if you have, I don't know if I can uh, so, show it. So today, if you have your mobile phone and you have a mobile bank, uh, a banking application, you will see only the piece which your bank is providing to you. With open banking, you will be able to see all the other banking relationships you have or uh, insurances or any other services which will be uh, utilizing the exposed APIs. So today you as a user, you, will, you can only see one. Open banking will allow you to maneuver and transact um, in multiple different areas. So you really have the account holder, which is you, and then there is a data uh, uh, requester, which could be a bank or it could be a FinTech. And then there are the APIs, which obviously uh, do the calls securely and individually at the specific time. And then the banks are in the back. So it's really, that's a revolution, right? If you think about it from a banking perspective, what open banking gives us, and, and then you break it down. I want to take you to multiple disciplines. We spoke about the banking and I would think about 
open banking from a tech giant's perspective. And, and Google is a really great example. And I will go straight into the into the meat of it. So uh, I, I hope that some of you used obviously Apple Pay and Google, Google Pay who are on the call. So those who use Google Pay, you might remember that Google Pay uh, uh, was launched in 2015 uh, in about 28 countries. And now Google already signed agreement with about eight banks, including uh, BBVA to offer digital checking and saving accounts. So they're moving really into the space of interconnecting the banks, uh, obviously, and op uh, uh, offering it to the cost customers as an open banking solution. Now, another application of open banking is BNPL. Uh, and I would be really interested is, uh, you know, if you use BNPL, you as a consumer, uh, um, so here are some data, obviously, from the markets in Europe. So suites, 30% of suites are using BMPL for online purchases. That's really, really big number, right? Uh, then if you look on, next to it, obviously not a little bit further down uh, onto the west is Germany. 20% of Germans are using um, uh, uh, BNPL for uh, uh, online purchases. And if you look at uh, Europe itself, one estimates that by 2024, 13% will go through BNPL. So this is a really big area and having it on, on open banking rails offers a vast majority, vast opportunity for any kind of banking uh, institution in the backend. Now that, that's on the open banking, right? Which is the chapter number one. Uh, now I want to take you to the chapter number two. It sounds like Star Wars, right? Because Star Wars also operates uh, uh, on, on, on chapters. Uh, I hope there are some Star Wars fans behind. So uh, the second chapter, which maybe banks uh, are a little bit scared of is so-called bank as a service, right? I mean, again, I, I came from banking. I was in banking for 23 years uh, in Europe, Asia, Africa, um, before I joined MasterCard in 2015. And in the past, bank would have most of the decision power, but now there are new models, right? For the bank uh, as a service. So the concept as a bank as a service means that banks almost take up back, backstage, right? So they are able now provide services through third parties. So you can provide banking services through telcos. So, so FIs, non-FIs, you can uh, offer banking services through um, retailers and different kind of merchants. So in, is this like a for first time banks, banks can now offer everything which you do, not purely through a banking service, which is, and you might ask yourself, how big is this really? Is it real, right? Uh, uh, bank as a service. So look at it. By 2030, uh, uh, it's estimated that the bank as a service, that means that embedded finance will represent about $7 trillion. And there will be about $230 billion in revenues by 2025 by the, from the already existing ecosystem. And you, you look at the sum of the products which you can use and offer. So obviously debit cards, credit cards, prepaid cards, any kind of banking services, lending, and also uh, asset management. And that, it's wonderful because I was on a workshop yesterday with a customer and they say, you know, we're starting a bank and they said, digital bank and say, we don't want to call ourselves bank anymore because people generally don't like banks. So we, we need to position ourselves differently. And the bank as a service offers banks to reach customers with their products uh, by not actually customer feeling that they interact with the bank, right? A great example of it uh, is IKEA. You might be aware that IKEA obviously now has an Econo Bank, which is the financial arm of IKEA. IKEA is, is a really big organization, and they want to utilize the, the data which they have on their consumers uh, 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 and, and build it in into the financial uh, financial financial services. And again, IKEA then provides the banking services through the IKEA channels, and it's un, uh, underwritten by the Econo Bank. So it's a really great uh, showcase how this will apart. So this is the second one. I'm just uh, uh, checking my time. Uh, and I want to take you to two more. One is the, the new future and the new reality, right? Um, the, the new future, I think it's really exciting, uh, uh, which is, you know, the, the conversion of the technologies today and the data, it's, it's unprecedented, right? So if you think about 5G is coming, if you think about computing uh, power in terms of quantum and all the data which you have, that, that opens uh, doors of enormous opportunities and possibilities. And today, I think that data is 
uh, commodity and data is the asset, right? It's not the services and the experiences, it's the data which we're mining across the different uh, different sectors. So the if you look at the future, the future is really combining them all. And uh, uh, I want to get your imagination a little bit going wild, right? And I'm sure that you see the trend across the slides that we, I'm not talking about payments because payments in the future and today are invisible. They only enable us. So think about it that you stand in front of your fridge and now obviously with growth of 5, 5G and computing, it will allow you to, uh, uh, your fridge will automatically order and pay and produce everything which is in your fridge, right? What you cook um, and will be able obviously to create different kind of journeys and experiences. The payment will be always there and the technology need to be embedded. So if I stand in front of my fridge, I will maybe pay with my biometrics, right? I don't want to come to my own fridge and tap my phone, right? It will scan my iris and uh, I will be able, uh, on with my voice. Obviously voice payments are also very popular. So Samsung already have and other various companies are really creating these experiences. And then, then the market is, again, if you think about these numbers, is expected to reach about 125 billion US dollars by 2025, which is only in three years. So it means that the investments into these technologies is really, really big. Uh, now, going from your home, if you look at it again, thinking about payments underlying between is the shopping. And these are experiences which already exist today. So uh, uh, obviously you, you, you all know and I'm aware about uh, Amazon stores, right? Where you just walk in, walk out. But if you look at it from a more experiential perspective, what are some of the pain points customers have which the payments are in the back, but uh, are necessary, uh, obviously, in order to complete the purchase. You, uh, there are innovative ways to where you have built-in scales, where you have bags which are uh, scanning the goods which you have, where you check out exactly by the shopping cart, where you where it tells you if you're on a budget. And if you if you take it a little bit more further, it can start to manage your inventory. It can you know build in loyalty and and manage your household. So again. Payment is there, but it's not primary. You don't sell payments anymore, but you sell experiences. Uh, I mean, many of us use cars and drive cars. And today I have a car here in the uh, garage and the garage, uh, obviously it's standing there, right? The whole whole day doing nothing. So I want you to fast forward a little bit into the autonomous vehicles. And that's where the future is that the cars will be, uh, we could have a token, um, uh, Fred, uh, uh, Curry and I will have a car together. So I will have a partial ownership, which will sit on a blockchain represented by an by NFT. And we will share the car. The car is able to buy itself, go and shop. The car will be able to exchange data with other cars uh, in terms of consumptions, in terms of uh, um, uh, the status of the quality of a car and uh, 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 will be able to perform multiple different disciplines. You could be, I mean, if Fred and I own the car uh, as a shared ownership on a, on a blockchain, we could decide that we could use that NFT and put it into metaverse and somebody else can drive it there. We can make a revenue out of it, right? So there's a lot of in physical and, 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 and virtual world where the um, uh, anonymous vehicles obviously will be utilized. And you can see again, I mean, the estimate by 2026 is, $556 billion uh, uh, which are invested in technologies. And, and I really want you to stretch your thinking that it's not just a car which will drive itself, right? Uh, this will have multiple different disciplines uh, uh, which the car uh, can be used for. Um, in terms of shopping, uh, and obviously we have a lot of shopping, obviously I automatically is, uh, ends up with purchase, right? In the past, you will have a, somebody would swipe your card and you will have a paper which comes out of a post machine. Now, not, not anymore, right? Today, your receipt can uh, uh, start a new interaction, right? It uh, can start your, what do you want to return? How do you want to collect your loyalty? Again, it, it's ju not just a payment, right? It allows you multiple different disciplines uh, uh, and utilize the experience that your customer has to maybe purchase more and to be loyal to the brand. And I want to touch on live streaming a little bit. Uh, uh, um, and this is obviously not so popular in this part of the world, but it's extremely popular in, in Asia, where uh, customer obviously do 2D shopping experiences where they live stream. Uh, and if you look at the, how big the industry is, there is around 60 billion revenue generated in China uh, 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 out of uh, uh, live streaming and live shopping. Uh, um, and you know, the amounts of people who are, there's a great example where there's one single influencer where uh, it reaches $37 million in terms of, you know, the sales. So 
the, the live streaming is another way. And you can think about live streaming also from a banking perspective, right? So how do I enable my products to be ready, used in live streams? and be able to pay when live stream is happening. If it's a fashion show and somebody goes to a shop, can I use my uh, MasterCard to pay with it? Can I use my uh, uh, crypto wallet to do it? So I think from a banking perspective, if you take all of these trends, where does the payment fit in? And are you ready from, uh, 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 from your channel perspective to accept these payments? Uh, one more uh, example, which is obviously Snapchat, which today already uh, enables uh, augmented reality so that you can try close on. So if I do it, can I immediately pay, right? Can I then use the receipt which I paid for with your card uh, uh, to do returns or collect loyalty? The last one, uh, I think I have still about three minutes uh, uh, and then we have, I think, five minutes for, for questions, is the new reality, right? So we talk about what is obviously here now, which is open banking, uh, uh, we spoke about uh, the, uh, the future, some of the futuristic stuff, and I want to take you to the reality now. Uh, what is already there, and obviously, uh, 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 one of the key realities is crypto. And you know, um, um, in uh, one of our uh, seniors calls it that today is crypto winter, right? Like it's Game of Thrones. But uh, uh, I think that the winter is also in a stock. But if you look at crypto and, and blockchain uh, in its, uh, in its uh, uh, from a numbers perspective, what it can do is that there is obviously estimate that by 2024, there'll be 1 billion people who will utilize crypto. And uh, it grows so much faster than it is. And, and, and it's here, it's a reality. I mean, to really be able from a banking perspective to cope with it, right? And I want to give you a couple of examples. So uh, um, the, there are new uh, ways how you, how the tokens and exchanges change our way how we pay today, right? Uh, um, I am sure many people in the audience try to buy NFTs, open a MetaMask wallet or open a, a Binance wallet or crypto.com wallet uh, uh, and, and, you know, the, today, the experience is to convert fiat to crypto is still very cumbersome. So how do you make it as a bank? How do you enable your users to, to be able to convert easily money from crypto to, to, to fiat and vice versa, right? And utilize that. And today, if you look at it, the, uh, there's, we are very driven by influencers. So if anybody says that this bank can do it, people then follow the same like in gaming. And obviously, NFTs came along and... Uh, 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 many people just, if they think about NFTs, they feel only about Board Panda, which is obviously, uh, uh, which may, made it quite popular, but it's not only that, right? The non-fungible tokens, you can tokenize absolutely everything. And I want to, to I think, go to this slide and, and use an example from banking, right? So even here, you can see that you can um, tokenize things in properties. I want you to imagine something, right? So uh, let's say I bank with Bank of Beirut, correct? So I'm your customer and I want to apply for a loan, yes? So what do you know about me? You know about me what is probably on your CRM system and what is on your co-banking system, right? And maybe card management system and so on, and maybe some Excel spreadsheets which are somewhere in my file, like many banks. Now, this is, that makes your decision really difficult, right? You, may, you have to assess me on information I provided to you which you can't verify because today you, you can't. So Fast forward and imagine that you will have a, a legislation which would require the customers to tokenize all the movable and immovable assets. So from one day to another, let's, uh, 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 I will pick on Fred again because I can see his face. So he is the head of the uh, uh, retail banking. He will not only see what Andrea has in his bank, but he will see, because Andrea, will, through open banking, he will see that she has a relationship with HSBC and Rug Bank. So he will see all the relationship, but that's not enough, right? Andrea will have tokenized all the art she has in her house. She will tokenize her cars. She will tokenize her properties. She will tokenize her insurance policy. She will tokenize her medical records, right? What will, what will that do? So if I go to Bank of Beirut and will apply for a loan, Bank of Beirut don't owns my data anymore. They will send a request to a data aggregator, right? Uh, or data broker, if you want to say. That data broker will send a, a message to an open banking to acquire my consent. And that consent will give Fred entire overview of what Andra is worth, right? Not only from that one singular information she has in, in uh, Bank of Beirut, but he will know, as I said, 
when I bought the car, what car I have, what house I have, what other properties I own, what investments I have in shares on crypto, what are my insurances, absolutely everything. And from that perspective, tokens play, and block token, blockchain, and open banking are phenomenal, right? Because it will enable bank to make much faster decisions, manage their risk much, much better. So I really want you to think about the blockchain technology and token technology and open banking about uh, something which is incredible for us in payments and banking because it will enable us to make much better a business in the future. And with that, you know, uh, um, I think this is a really exciting part. I think if you think about all the different technologies which are there today and the experiences customer can have, uh, uh, but I think it's pre really only the beginning. So what does it mean for you? Uh, 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 I mean, there are two things, right? I think you really need as a as banks or bank to identify the value of your own data and how to store it, right? I think it's very important to say, of course, you're busy of creating new products and new experiences, but you know, be digital and be API first, right? Treat APIs and data like products and embrace the revenue generate as a revenue generator. Where is it just a startup which uh, uh, got funding in UK where I can go on my uh, laptop and sign up to them and I can make money out of my own data, my search data. So without my consent, they will not sell my data to anybody else. And you, I mean, you don't make thousands of pounds, but you can do 20, 30 pounds you know, a month, which is not bad, right? So you really need to think about that from, from that perspective and think platforms and capabilities and designs how you want to participate, right? And, and, and in terms of what role to play in the digital world, constantly test and learn and, and, and be uh, courageous and curious. Start with outcomes, problems, and total experiences. I think it's really important to say, what do I want to achieve? What, if, I, if you look around yourself, uh, and I always say the best learnings for innovation and technology and payments are science fiction movies, right? Ready Player One, Minority Report, iRobot, uh, all of these, they already have it all there, right? So how can I replicate it in reality? And obviously leverage the power of your own brand. So with that, I think that's my last slide. So I want to thank you. I think we have about four minutes if anybody have any questions uh, for listening to me. I hope you found it informative and, and you're taking something away. And um, as, the, as the slide says, Explorer, two explorers have no maps. And I think that's just what's happening today in the technology. Thank you very much. Andrea, thank you for your comprehensive uh, presentation and overview on MasterCard current and the trend and the future. So uh, Q&A will be at the, at the latest session uh, after finishing all the panelists. So let's start uh, with myself as a brief regarding the cash management and technology solution that we have in, at Bank of Beirut. So uh, at Bank of Beirut, uh, transaction banking was established uh, from 12 years ago where uh, other local banks uh, uh, are not aware what is transaction banking and the banking sector. Actually, there, are, there were multinational banks like uh, HSBC and Citibank, where the transaction business was there from decades, actually. Bank of Beirut has established this department that, uh, that the main objective was to focus on uh, digital solutions for commercial clients coming from small groceries to large scale companies in order to digitize their uh, working capital cycle from the receivables part to the payables part and order bottom line to gain more market share actually and at the same time to maximize the efficiency uh, uh, and reduce cost of reduction for all the commercial clients depending on the scale and the objective and the needs of each and every business. So what we believe in Bank of Beirut is the technology, specifically on the e-commerce side. So uh, Bank of Beirut is heavily investing in technology at all levels, coming from the e-commerce business, which is very booming nowadays worldwide, not, not only lo uh, locally. However, Bank of Beirut is adopting the strategy in order to, to maximize and grab, to be a door opener or the pioneer in order to grab the businesses in order to others to follow actually uh, at face value. So what we have in place and what we believe, looking from the blockchain or APIs or the FinTech, we are here now at Bank of Beirut 
from this from a very different aspects. We have uh, statistics coming from credible uh, means, like uh, sixty three percent of US commercial clients are currently focusing on transaction banking capabilities from before the main uh, income stream for banks were only focused on uh, commercial banking as a lending or treasury nowadays or private banking actually nowadays all the banks globally are focusing uh, uh, literally on transaction banking that contains or comprises all digital solutions for all customers across the board as well, 45% of the IT are investing in the IT of the transaction banking. Believe it or not, we, this is the turning point of the banking era in Lebanon and globally, actually. As well, coming also from Bank of Beirut, we are the acquirers of the uh, uh, merchant acquiring business from MasterCard and PGS MasterCard Payment Gateway System. The flagship that we always showcase our clients that we have upper hand with comparing to other banks and order from the coming from the SLAs and the technology that MasterCard is adopting, as Andrea has elaborated at further level. As well, uh, at Bank of Beirut, we are very proud that we are the only and first and the only local bank that the onboarding process literally coming from the sla perspective literally 48 hours uh, our clients are being onboarded and up and running nowadays the speed of business is crucial it's not about only the commissions or fees related it's about the slas this is international standards correct me if i'm wrong then the technical support that we have at bank of beirut will allow all our customers coming from small groceries as i said individuals to, to startups, to large scale companies, the main objective or the main uh, need that they have technology, best service, and we promote it as 24 seven support. Like Amazon says, best service is no service. However, we are available to service our clients 24 seven via all the channels coming from the WhatsApp, to the SMS, to the emails, to the phone calls. So no, other banks are currently servicing such service due that they are not in belief that the trend or the future is now here in technology. So Bank of Beirut also, it's very crucial and critical after the crisis that accessibility on the funds is very, very, very critical and crucial due to the, uh, the trust that we are, it's diminishing day by day. However, now it's bringing up and coming up due to the, uh, uh, the services and the commitments that we are committing with our clients in order to access the cash upon receiving the proceeds, i.e. like if we have a big merchant that uh, proceeding or processing, like example, half a million dollars monthly basis, it has the ability or the accessibility to withdraw the money real time basis. So we are gaining grounds again in terms of trust, in terms of technology. The future is here. Bank of Beirut is leading in technology. Despite of the, uh, the major issues of the bank, we consider that the banks needs to continue, needs to adapt, needs to adopt actually also technology that we are doing actually. This is already I was introducing that we established 12 years ago. This is the awards before the crisis. Unfortunately, hoping to get more, more, and more awards after everything is being settled. And this is uh, the focal point when we focus on our clients. We focus on what are their main needs. We focus. We pinpoint on the, on their main needs. Collection via what? Via technology, via payment gateway with MasterCard, with the assistance of Faxco. Now, uh, of course, Mr. Gavin will further elaborate what is Faxco and what are the advantages of Faxco, right? And also uh, liquidity, the access on the fresh via cash withdrawals, via remittation of cash abroad. This is on real time basis, gentlemen, as well as. A payroll, anything that 
the client is in need, we can cater 24 seven. As well, as you know, the, ca the cash management pillars or the working cycle pillars of any company, despite of the, the scale of the company is coming from the collection, what means and the liquidity and definitely the payable side. So at Bank of Beirut, we have the 360 approach cycle that covers everything in a digital way. I will go through fastly regarding the government tell and governance and control that we have in place with the systems we are audited by the big four audit firms in terms of governance in terms of security in terms of compliance so we are compliant with all iso as well as standards for the banks related no man no manual intervention as you know gentlemen when we're talking about technology the manual intervention shall be losing its weight concerning when comparing it to the, the technology, right? So when you go digital, you reduce costs. There is a study, a credible study from McKinsey that says when you go digital, you will be reducing 50 times cost when you're doing your payments or receivables in a manual way. Operating expenses, as we said, definitely will be reduced. Audit report, also you will have hands-on eagle eye on everything from A to Z by audit, leak, uh, audit logs and reporting. Reachability, Bank of Beirut is the only local bank as well, specifically within the lockdowns that allowed all the clients that were in need in cash or to remit money outside via the digital corporate online. As well, that I will give you a, a, a tangible example concrete that we uh, use Caritas as a testimonial client. Caritas, during the Beirut blast, unfortunate uh, disaster, Beirut blast, they asked to, to start collecting money via the donations coming from abroad. Where is the best channel to do this in, uh, in a 48 hours basis? So we were able to onboard Caritas to have a payment gateway and to start collecting money in order not to lose not to lose any one cent. So what we have is speed, what we have is technology advanced, what we have a team members that focusing on relationship. So it's about the 360 approach that I was elaborating uh, previously as well. This is very crucial and important to see that BOB also has the corporate mobile app for the companies. So no bank has the corporate mobile app for the companies in order to sign, to sign on on the go. This is very flexible, specifically for the syndicate as well, Mr. George Khwairi. When, when we can say that, we, that the syndicate that you have Every payment, everything that is being prepared and you are on the go, you need to sign the payroll or any type of payment. Why you should be present or the laptop in front of you if you can sign every single payment within the bylaws and the terms and the conditions of the company on the go. This is also very crucial that is bringing business as well. As I said, we are the only bank that has the full workflow in terms of the bylaws segregated in order to sign, authorize, per account, per transaction, per any scenario that the company wishes to implement based on the, its current bylaws in order to respect the governance and the rules and regulations. As well, we have the capability to integrate host to host to integrate with the current ERP, be, be it Oracle, SAP, JDE, Navision, any type of, of ERP that reads Excel, we can integrate in order to, to, to streamline processes and to optimize and electronic reconciliation is in place. This is the corporate banking app that I also mentioned previously. This is the host to host that we can integrate with all ERPs coming from small companies that has in-house actually ERP, no need to, no need to purchase a, a, a flagship or a top-notch 
ERP in order to integrate with Bank of Beirut systems. Thank you from my side with a, with a brief, very brief descriptive of what Bank of Beirut has digital and technology capabilities in order to cater all the needs of the commercial clients from small to large companies. Now I leave it to Mr. Gavin in order to also elaborate what FAXCO has in place uh, and what are the main advantages that, what, that will actually uh, serve in terms of e-commerce business. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Fred. Um, as Fred mentioned, my name is Gavin O'Sullivan and I represent a company called FEXCO. It stands for the Foreign Exchange Company. Um, you may have guessed that it's an Irish company from, from my accent. It's, it's quite a difficult accent to understand, so I'll, uh, I'll speak as slowly as possible. Um, so I think Fred has mentioned about Bank of Beirut really leading the way from a technology perspective and, and bringing unique products into the uh, Lebanese market. And the product I'm about to talk to you is, is really an example of that. It, it's a product called Dynamic Currency Conversion. And it sits on uh, the payment gateway offered by Bank of Beirut, which is MPGS. So really what Dynamic Currency Conversion does is it gives the customer a choice to pay in the home currency rather than the currency of the merchant. So in this example, you will see um, that John Smith is he's from Dubai, but he's uh, booking a hotel in, in Beirut currently for $200. Once he in, inserts his credit card details, uh, the option will appear straight away if he would prefer to pay in his home currency, which is more familiar to him and he's more comfortable. If the customer decides to pay in the local currency, the US dollar, they won't know how much it's actually costing them in their, in their home currency until they get their statement maybe in, in a month's time. So it, it's, it's, it's more transparent um, and, and it gives customers a bit more ease about spending money in, in, in foreign currencies. Um, so dynamic currency conversion, really, it's, it's a new revenue stream for acquiring banks. Um, for cardholders, it removes any currency exchange rate risk. So rather than a rate being applied in maybe two days time, um, it's applied on, uh, once the customer selects the currency, it's applied straight away. It's very uh, clear, transparent and convenient. It replaces the scheme enforced um, conversion process. So the, the conversion process is usually um, enforced by Visa and MasterCard uh, and it supports multiple currencies uh, and it, it's, a, it's a very dynamic product. You, you can set different margins based on different merchants, etc. But what I'm going to talk you through here is really what happens without DCC and, and what's the problem that DCC solves. So it's the same transaction. Um, the customer chooses, uh, or the customer before DCC was enabled, the customer would have to pay in US dollar. It would flow through MPGS um, and uh, Visa Mascard would realize that this is a foreign currency transaction. So the currency of the merchant is different than the currency of the card. So Visa Mastercard will apply a rate there and then and typically add about 0.5%. And then the issuer will see that this is a foreign, uh, foreign uh, transaction as well. And typically the, 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 the issuer will add 5%. So really from a, from a currency exchange perspective, it's the foreign issuer. So it's the bank in Dubai in this, in this example. It's the, it's the bank in Dubai who's, who's making uh, the, the, uh, the revenue here of 5%. So without DCC, again, this isn't just an example. Unfortunately, the cardholder will always pay a cost to use their card. It's just the nature of the business. Uh, Bank of Beirut don't make any uh, revenue from foreign exchange on credit cards through MPGS. Visa MasterCard make a, a slight 50 basis points uh, revenue. And again, it's the foreign issuer really who, who makes all the money. So we at Fexo didn't think that was fair. We think foreign issuers make, make enough money. So. We, we developed DCC as a way of moving that revenue from issuing banks to acquiring banks. So how it works is the, uh, the same transaction. Uh, once the customer puts in the card, uh, a rate request is sent through MPGS to Fexco. Um, but it's, it's a very basic message. Uh, we, we reply then, we recognize the currency of the, the card number from the bin, uh, and we apply a rate that we get from from uh, Reuters uh, and, and an agreed margin. Um, so really we see issuers applying a margin of uh, three to 5%. So if we apply around the, the same between three and 5%, it, it's fair for the cardholder. The cardholder isn't paying any more. 
Um, so that revenue that's applied, or that margin that's applied, uh, is then goes into Bank of Beirut. Um, so the foreign issuer no longer makes any fees from uh, from DCC. Uh, Visa Mastercard don't don't make anything. The cardholder will, will typically uh, spend the exact same. Uh, when, once the margin is fair, um, it's 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 applied, and the cardholder usually doesn't pay any extra. So <laughs> that was a very quick presentation. I, I thought it might have been longer than that, but. Um, again, I'll probably hand over to uh, to Mr. George, I believe, um, and we can take questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gavin. Thank you for the comprehensive and valuable inputs and information. I leave it to Mr. George Khwairi, President of the IT Syndicate in Lebanon. Please, George. Yes, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce, first of all, the Lebanese IT Syndicate, uh, which from the beginning we were uh, side by side uh, working with Bank of Beirut. And uh, we, uh, after doing a lot of research, we found that this is the only bank that is really ahead of technology always and uh, working in parallel with digital transformation. Uh, so we, we are the, the, the Lebanese IT syndicate. It should be uh, we should be using high tech. So technically, uh, we have we had some restraint because of the Lebanese laws because they're not up to date yet. But we, we are fighting uh, together to to make this right. Bank of Beirut gave us lots of opportunities with the, with the bad with the, with the with the situation in Lebanon. Those three years we got a lot delayed was uh, what began in uh, 2019 and the problems continues. But we are very happy that we see international company like Fexco and like MasterCard still have faith in Lebanon. And Bank of Beirut is still holding and fighting to be present in the market. So we thank you all for, the, for this kind, for your presence, first of all, and, uh, and for this webinar, which is really important. Uh, we, we, we have a very big share of the market now, nowadays. Uh, I, all IT people uh, are having lots of uh, business abroad and in Lebanon. Uh, what, I'm, what we are fighting for is to keep those Lebanese working at home remotely and getting fresh cash to Lebanon. And this could, couldn't be happened two years ago where we started because all means of payment were stopped. And we couldn't get paid, we couldn't receive our cash, we couldn't pay for the hosting. So Bank of Beirut always tried and is always helping to find those solutions. It's been two years we are, we are working together to find always solution to people so as they can try. Uh, we know the situation with the bank is closed. Lots of problem with the deposit depositors, which is the right of everyone. But the main issue is we have to continue also living and working from this country. We believe in this country. And one of the main issue that was the payment issue, and this was partially, partially solved by Bank of Beirut. As Mr. Fred said, uh, we could pay our, our, our employees, we could make transactions remotely from our own laptop, which is really great, and which is what's helping a lot. And as you know also that all means of business now require international credit card, require international payments in our fields. For example, website, hosting, Facebook ads, uh, Google ads, all those issues that are mainly uh, whenever we are doing business development, we are doing web development, we need to pay for a script, to get a hosting, to make transaction, to get paid from, from outside. And this could be managed very easily with, with the apps the mobile app, the personal mobile app, and the business from TBS. TBS was always uh, at our side, helping as much as they can. And we know that at the end, the employee of a bank, uh, he's facing the same. He's not living in Switzerland. He's living also in Lebanon. And they are facing the same problem as we, as we all do. So we have to keep our hand together to find a solution, not, not to fight each other. So uh, we're very grateful and for that. And uh, whenever we talk about solution, we, we had, uh, we, they all directly provide us with solution for NGOs, as was, uh, you said about, you talked about Caritas. And also we have two NGOs, people trying to help you facilitate us, our connection to the outside world. 
knowing that it's really down the drain, no internet, no bank transaction, no trust in the banking system anymore worldwide and locally. And we're still fi finding even a small hole of hope to, 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 to advance and to keep our people in Lebanon. I don't think a country is present without its people. So at the end, it will be only buildings and streets. And all the people with, with high connectivity, with, with high productivity, and they are leaving the country, which is what, this is mainly what we are fighting for. And what also Mr. Fred and his team has given us a lot of opportunities to keep them here. We are providing them the minimum means of of uh, the minimum means to continue or to live or to, to pay to, to get paid and uh, and i promise you and i'm, I'm telling you that uh, uh, we know that uh, 60 or 70 percent of the income of the fresh com money coming from outside is through it people because we are we can work remotely not all the jobs can be done remotely we can work remotely we can still be here and bring investment to our country and we have lots of projects regarding that soon we will close them one by one hopefully things will get better soon uh, regarding to technologies as mr fred said yes we, we try to overcome we, we, we worked on a lot of remote access servers remote access solutions uh, payment gateways payment processors and but at, at the end we need to have a point of presence to to to, to contact there's a lot of uh, issues that came, and I, here I like to uh, I like to tell my fellows, and my my fellow comrades in in, in my my syndicate, you have to be aware from all the fake uh, open banking because there's a lot. At least now, when you talk with Bank of Beirut, you have somebody to to ask for to. يعني عندك مرجع فيها للخبرية فيكم ترجعوا تحكوا البنك. Sorry, I'm going to continue in Arabic, but this is really critical. شباب عم بيجينا كثير اوفرات لقصص تفتح بفولك حساب برا بيعطوك كارت من برا هدول كلهم اذا بترجعوا للاساس تبعهم بتلاقوا انه 60 70% ما لهم مرجع يوم مع كل اللي صاير بالبلد اللي ما سبب لا بنك واحد ولا مؤسسه ولا هو بالنهايه نظام كله فارط فبالقليل في حدا بعده في مرجع فيكم تحكوا معه في بنك فيكم تفوتوا لعنده فيكم تقولوا له بغض النظر حقوق الموضوعين هذا الشيء ثاني لانه تهجرنا عليه كثير انه نحن عم نعمل اذا عم ننسق مع بنك وهيك بالنهايه لايف هاز تو كونتينيو وام ريلي ثانك فور ثانك يو فور ذس كومبليمنت ايفري ثينك اند ثانك يو فور ذس اوبورتونيتي مستر فريد ثانك يو فور ذا كومبليمنت از اي سايد بريفيسلي نحن وي ار ادوبتينج ا ديفرنت ابروتش ان اوردر تو تو ماكسيمايز as as much as possible uh, uh, the technology in terms of all the clients that are potential that are the future but the future is here mr khwairi that's why we believe in the technology specifically in the it era that that you are leading in lebanon as a syndicate and and we saw the progress upon inception of the syndicate and what you're doing the initiatives and the success stories that you are now a writing actually and we believe with Paxco and mastercard as a partners as well in order to come up locally with inventional uh, uh, service in order to cater despite of the crisis so exactly. thank you again for this point exactly yeah, you are you're giving us a, a hope through international companies to keep the face and to be able to continue and uh, this is what I, what I have to do to, to say sorry i'm really thankful for this opportunity uh, I, I hope soon we're gonna give more uh, positive thought you know. i think we should transform the negativity and the uh, situation the bad situation into positivity we can still we, we are known as the phoenix always we also we always uh, we are reborn from the ashes and inshallah this time uh, all together we're gonna be together thank you mr fexo again mr uh, sorry mr gavin from fexo again but thank you mrs uh anna i think the name uh, we had we had we had uh, mrs andrea from mastercard mrs. Andrea, yes. we have <laughs> mr gavin from Mexico and yourself mr Khwairi, and myself fred thank you all gentlemen uh, as as uh, uh, we, now we have the Q&A in order to answer a few questions uh, that uh, our audience needs uh, answers. 
So let's see what we have in place. This question is related to Bank of Beirut, actually. Do we need a company account to benefit of the e-commerce service? This is the first question. Definitely no. So no need to open an account in order to benefit from the e-commerce service. Second question, let's relate to whom. If someone pays me from a local bank in USD, how can I withdraw my money? Local card, bank in USD, how can I draw my money? Is it a fresh card? If it's fresh card, as we said, Bank of Beirut allows the full accessibility to our clients in order to, uh, to withdraw or to remit actually. Uh, Gavin and George, uh, Bank of Beirut has multiple channels in order to allow our clients to have the accessibility to, to remit the money real time or to, to, to withdraw the money or whatever they need in many terms, actually. Third question is, how long does the integration process takes? This is related to MasterCard and Bank of Beirut. And it's important as well to know that Bank of Beirut, the SLAs in order to integrate with any merchant, it takes 48 hours to be onboarded live. So this is very, very, very speedy actually. Question number four, uh, also related to Bank of Beirut. I'm really sorry. Maybe then, okay, we have a question for the syndicate and FAXCO, but let me also sequentially go with it. How many users can be added to the corporate online portal? As well, we have advantage on other banks. The corporate uh, users that, that, that can be added are unlimited. You can add 30 users. Example, if you have a company that has many bylaws and many uh, authorization levels that says the payroll officers has authorization only to check payroll accounts and disbursements, while the finance has the accessibility to remit money and the treasury as well. So you can uh, add many users as you can in order to replicate the bylaws of the company. Uh, question number five, can final authorizes approve payments from the mobile app? This is what I told uh, the audience when I started my uh, presentation, that we are the only local bank that has corporate mobile app. George Khwairi has mobile app for individual. Mr. Gavin has mobile app for individual, for himself. However, Bank of Beirut has established or created corporate mobile app specifically for the authorizers. Uh, question number uh, six, what is the main role of the IT syndicate nowadays in order to gather and uh, uh, integrate all the ITs in order to come up within a one brain approach, i.e. are the IT syndicate members uh, coordinating in order to uh, improve the technology in the digital era? Okay, we're doing uh, lots of groups and uh, because, you know, we have lots of uh, there's people specialized in development, special people in, uh, in lots of area, every area there's a group and yes, there's knowledge management and distribution of knowledge between every group. So yes, we are trying, we, we, did, we, we did it before and we are redoing it now. Soon we're going to uh, apply for committees, every committee will be responsible of a section. This will uh, make the people meet, uh, coordinate, help each other. And uh, yeah, yes, we are working to, to create a bigger community and to join forces together. This is, this is great. Glad to hear this. Mr. Kevin, uh, we have a question related to FAXCO in terms of what is, what is the real added or tangible added value when Bank of Beirut has the service to to embed Faxco in the uh, e-commerce business, what is the real first uh, uh, tangible uh, advantage that Faxco can service or serve to Bank of Beirut clients? I know so, you have many advantages, but yeah. what is the most important actually? This is what the I got now. now. Is is that studies have shown that customers are about seventy percent more likely to purchase. When they're purchasing in their home currency so it reduces that abandonment rate um in the shopping cart when the customer is used to their, their their home currency and really that is the main advantage it's about making sure that every on your website 
has the largest opportunity of, of convert you have converting into a sale. That's all for today. Uh, I really appreciate the audience as well, and Mr. Khwairi, Mr. Mr. Gavin, and Andrea, and the audience for your uh, for your involvement and to showcase the real capabilities and the advantages of the syndicate and Paxco and Mastercard. And hopefully, we we can further coordinate in order to come up with the best solution to cater the local needs as well. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Any further, further communication or had uh, enough time with it. Thank you. Thank you. Yalla, take care and stay safe.